Hey guys, today I wanna to talk about seven reasons why I think the Sony FX30 is a better choice than the Sony FX3. Now you may already be thinking, there really isn't much of a reason to choose the FX30 if you have the budget for the FX3. But I'd argue that this camera more than suffices in many scenarios. For me personally, as a wedding filmmaker, if I was starting my business from scratch, this camera would have everything I need to create beautiful films. But I don't only think that this camera is great for wedding films, I think it's a good choice for other types of client work as well. So let's get right into it. So the most obvious reason to choose the FX30 over the FX3 is the price. It's literally less than half the price at only 1800 US dollars. When I first heard what the FX3's price at, I was absolutely shocked, considering it has so many great specifications. Now, if you'd rather choose to go with the FX3, you'll be spending 3900 US dollars. That is a significant increase over the FX30. When a camera is priced this low, we initially think it must not be very good, but the FX30 is jam packed with great features at a low cost. If I was starting out again, I would buy two of the FX30s rather than one FX3 or A7S3. Talking about low price, this leads into my next reason, which is lens options. You probably know this already, but Sony full frame lenses are quite expensive. In some scenarios, you may end up spending more on the lens than the camera itself. But the Sony FX30 has an APS-C sensor, which means you can buy the cheaper APS-C lenses for this camera. These lenses can be half or even a third of the cost of full frame lenses, yet still produce similar quality. One of my favorite APS-C lenses, the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter f2.8, costs only 500 US dollars. The closest full frame equivalent, the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8, costs over a thousand US dollars. Also an extra perk of having APS-C lenses is that they are usually smaller, so this is good for travel filmmaking or if you just wanna have a small, minimal setup. Reason number three is the LCD screen. Now the FX30's LCD screen has 2.36 million dots, compared to the FX3 screen at 1.44 million dots. That's a significant increase in quality, which will make filmmaking much more easier. I definitely noticed yesterday when I was filming that short FX30 S Cinetone video, I was looking at the screen and I couldn't believe the quality. I could see the image so clearly. Though I usually film with an on-camera monitor, this gives me the confidence to just grab my camera, go out, and I know that I can see my image clearly on the LCD screen. Probably the most exciting reason to choose the FX30 over the FX3 is its higher resolution. Yes, internally both cameras record the same codecs and resolution, but the FX30 oversamples from a 6K image. This produces a much more detailed image compared to the FX3. Now I know not everyone cares about having a sharper image, that's fine, stylistic choices, or it just depends on the type of work you're doing. You can see that if you're doing product type work that you definitely want a sharper image. If sharpness matters to you, the FX30 is definitely a good choice. Moving on to the next reason, let's talk about battery life. I already think the FX3 has great battery life. One battery can get me up to two hours of filming, but the FX30 is even better. I can get an extra 30 minutes of recording time. Okay, reason number six is focus mapping. Now I wish this feature was on the FX3 and the A7S3, and I thought that they would add it with these new firmware updates that are coming out, but they still haven't added it but the FX30 does have it. This tool is incredible for nailing focus every time. And yes, Sony has incredible autofocus. You could just rely on that all the time. But if you like to do creative shots, do manual focus, it's nice to see where your image is actually focusing. The clear part of the image signifies what is in focus and the colored portion is out of focus. Now going back to the quality of the LCD screen, this feature will give you even more confidence to film without a monitor. Okay, the last reason that I wanna mention is breathing compensation. This feature is incredible and so useful and will definitely elevate the quality of your work. I'll show you an example of the breathing compensation off and then on so you can see it for yourself. I believe that this feature will give your films a more cinematic look. Well guys, those are my seven reasons why you should choose the Sony FX30 over the FX3. And don't get me wrong, the FX3 is an incredible camera. I've been using it for over a year. I absolutely love it but with all the specifications and the quality that comes out of the FX30, it's almost too good to be true. Soon I'll be putting out a video why you should choose the FX3 over the FX30, so make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so that you don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.